The room stiffened abruptly. It was face up there on the plain, greasy planks of the table. The broken half of the bronze ice axe was still buried in the queer skull. Three mad, hate-filled eyes blazed up with a living fire, bright as fresh-spilled blood, from a face ringed with a writhing, loathsome nest of worms, blue mobile worms that crawled where hair should grow. Van Wall, six feet and two hundred pounds of ice-nerved pilot, gave a queer, strangled gasp and butted, stumbled his way out to the corridor. Half the company broke for the doors. The others stumbled away from the table. Blair had a tack hammer. The ice that cased the thing sloughed crisply under its still claw as it peeled from the thing it had cased for twenty million years. And that is an excerpt from the story I'll be discussing today, Who Goes There, by John W. Campbell. Published in 1938, Who Goes There is a science fiction horror novella written by John W. Campbell Jr., but it was written under his pen name Don A. Stewart and first appeared in the magazine Astounding Science Fiction. The novella has had a wide cultural impact, inspiring many adaptations and other types of stories within the genre. It was first adapted into a film in 1951 titled The Thing from Another World. Again, in 1972 as Horror Express, John Carpenter made an attempt at it in 1982 simply titled The Thing and most recently a prequel to Carpenter's film, also titled The Thing, was released in 2011. In 2010, Peter Watts published a version of the story told from the point of view of the alien. The story was titled The Things and appeared in Clark's World magazine. Many other writers were inspired by Campbell's work. One notable mention is A.E. Van Vogt, who was inspired by Campbell's story to write Vault of the Beast in 1940. Vogt had this to say about his experience reading Campbell's story, quote, I read half of it standing there at the newsstand before I bought the issue and finished it. That brought me back into the fold with a vengeance. I still regard that as the best story Campbell ever wrote, and the best horror tale in science fiction, end quote. I would also say that Philip K. Dick was greatly inspired by Campbell. His stories often deal with the same themes that question and bend reality. The story is about a group of scientific researchers who are isolated on a base in Antarctica. They discover a ship buried under the ice and attempt to thaw the interior with a thermite charge but instead damage the hull. However, they also find the alien pilot frozen in the ice and return it to the base and decide to thaw it for further study. Their troubles begin when the alien revives and assumes the shape, memories, and personality of any living thing it devours, turning the men against one another in a paranoid plot of deduction and discovery, leading to a fearsome battle in sub-zero temperatures with the evolved form of the monster in the climax. This story is definitely a paranoid heart pounder. I found myself gripped by the complexity through which the plot unfolds. The men on the base aren't allowed any way out, even destroying the magnetos on their airplanes to prevent leaving the area, but also preventing anyone from attempting rescue for fear that they might spread the alien contagion to the rest of mankind. The men alternate shifts of staying awake through the night to stand watch for any suspicious signs. Everyone is a suspicion. Each man is both suspicious of himself being an alien imitation, but is also defensive of accusation. The description of the monster was quite chilling and vivid for me as well. I was particularly gripped by the description of the three red, hate-filled eyes. The description resonated with me. What was the source of that wretched hate those 20 million years ago when it was frozen? Was it just the outrage from being frozen and crash-landed, or was it caused by something else? The emotions behind the monster's eyes suggested a, a depth to that character, and that definitely kept me invested 
and I've also continued to ponder about it after I finish the story, and that's when you know a story's really good, when it continues to resonate with you afterwards. The monster also accomplished the gross-out factor as well. Let me just say this. I think I'll hold off from some pasta and casserole dishes after the description of the wriggling blue worms surrounding the thing's face. Like the fear and funny bone, the gross-out factor affects us all in our own special way. Overall, this is a great story. It's a classic in the horror science fiction genre. A must-read for every horror fan if you haven't discovered it yet. Let me know in the comments below what you think of John W. Campbell's frightening tale, Who Goes There? I'd love if you'd join the discussion. And please like this video and subscribe if you haven't yet. And this is Death Ground Reviews, the monster that devours horror, suspense, and all those things of the fantastic. And I'll talk to you again soon.